say that the 1920s is reflective of the time period before or very different? Very different. I'd like you to write down how. How? Why is the 1920s considered like? Why two worlds? Once upon a time, we wanted to explore the possibility of an iPad one-to-one. -one. Uh, sorry, of a one-to-one. -one. We weren't thinking iPads. I was actually told that this district would never be an Apple district. We came up with what students needed, the direction of how we wanted the instruction to go, and then we went from there. And we found the device that kind of fit our vision. You know, when we first implemented iPads into this district, in this school, I think there was sort of people were, were searching for, is there a magic app that is going to sort of revolutionize and transform the classroom? And I think what we realized is, it's really a, a, a mindset change. These one-to-one -one devices have really changed the way that teachers have thought about what an effective lesson looks like. I think that it really has kind of changed the, uh, the classroom setting, you know, being more creative and, and finding more inventive ways to have students really discover knowledge rather than just kind of copy knowledge or recite knowledge. I, I do think the iPads are a huge equalizer for multiple reasons. The top three benefits would be access to information, allowing the kids to have the tools they need in order to create uh, 21st century products right, and to see what that is and then also the collaboration tools. I think to be able to collaborate um, both with their teacher and then also with their classmates and working on projects collaboratively. So right now the big change is we're using this calculator and the GeoGebra app. That app will help us really change what we do and how kids learn. I know that our district is 34% uh, um, classified as what the state calls uh, economically disadvantaged. About 300 kids had to be given calculators to use during the Regents exam. So those 300 kids obviously didn't have their own calculator. It helps us provide that equity, right? I mean, those 300 kids now are 300 kids that throughout that school year didn't have a calculator to do their homework, study for their tests, and, and, and do their work. I think it's the best thing we ever did. So I'm extremely confident just because of the amount of support that we've gotten from Apple and from JAMP and from the teachers that are really enthused about it who've become technology leaders in the district, being in the classroom and providing that support. This June, we'll be testing probably 4,000 students, New York State exams. Our IT department uses Jamf and a couple of button clicks to, to download the latest version of the app. How do we ever do it? Who, who's gonna go around? We're gonna tell every student, make sure your app is updated, make sure you have the latest version. We would have to do that with every kid. It's like. Ish. You know what? I don't think it could be done without Jam. I don't think it could. I read an article recently that said, uh, you know, the age of information is now over. We're now in the age of, of experience, right? And, you know, when you think about what we want our teachers to do in, in classrooms, it's to provide that experience for students. Because good instruction is good instruction with or without the technology. The technology is not what makes the instruction good. Um, it's still the teacher. Um, we're just here to empower them. What, what you get out of teaching, the reward is, is the kids learning. You know what I mean? It's that aha factor, it's that light bulb going on. I don't, I don't think that's changed with an iPad. I think the teachers are just able to make it happen for more kids in more ways. That's the goal. You know, the goal is not using the device. The goal is what can the device do for you, right? It's a tool.